This recording provides an overview for non-school local governments on the most recent special session bill, HB 24B-1001, concerning property taxes. It will provide a summary of assessed value changes, the local government property tax revenue limit, and backfill from HB 24B-1001 from the special session. It also includes a brief summary of HB 24-1302, which came from the regular session earlier this year, concerning additional information that local governments have to provide on their mill levies. This recorded webinar does not include information for school districts. School districts are encouraged to contact the Colorado Department of Education for information about how HB 24B-1001 might affect the upcoming budget. Today, we'll cover a brief background of recent legislation in the past couple of years to give you some context on uh, how we got here. Then we'll discuss an overview of SB 24233 from the last regular session and HB 24B-1001 from the most recent special session, which modified SB 233. Then I'll briefly discuss another piece of legislation from the last regular session, HB 24-1302, which now requires some additional information or reporting to the county when you certify your mill levy to the county in December. So we'll start with some context on recent legislative changes to property tax over the last couple of years. Um, this webinar is really just intended to provide you a brief summary um, about the legislation that can impact your local government's upcoming 2025 budget. So uh, for the recap of the last couple of years, the Gallagher Amendment was repealed in 2020. Uh, after that, in 2022, SB 22238 was passed, which reduced property taxes and included a state reimbursement or, quote, backfill to all local taxing entities for the 2023 property tax year, which is the 2024 budget year. Backfills varied from 100% of revenue reduction to a portion of revenue reductions based on factors such as type of local, local, local government, county population, and assessed value growth. In 2023, SB 23303 referred Prop HH to voters at the November 2023 election. So if that had been successful, it would have made further reductions in assessed values, created a new property tax revenue limit based on inflation, among other changes. However, voters did not approve Prop HH, and as a result of that, the governor called a special session last year uh, in late 2023, which resulted in the passage of SB 23B-001. Now, that special session bill from last year, which impacted the 2024 budget year, made changes to assessed values, one-time changes to deadlines for local government budgets and property taxes, and included an additional reimbursement for local governments for the 2024 budget year. Um, the additional backfill, if you will, that came out of that, the SB 23B-01, 001 was on top of the backfill that was enacted in 23303. Uh, it, it also impacted the budget year deadlines um, for that uh, during budget season last fall and winter. So now we can move on to um, this year, 2024. So during the regular session, SB 24233 made some assessed value changes, created a created a new or second statutory property tax revenue limit, generally to be imposed for local governments that are waived from the existing statutory property tax limit or have waived some table restrictions. 
and the backfill provision from 24233 was uh, very limited and available to local governments uh, with a decline in assessed value between the 2022 property tax year and the 2024 property tax year. So the the backfill for 24233 is available for local governments with a decline in assessed value from the 2023 budget year um, to the 2025 budget year. So throughout this webinar, we'll kind of be using both the property tax year and the budget year. Um, the reason being that uh, the reason being that a lot of the policies are done in property tax year, but for local government budget officers, that actually applies to this, the following year when it comes to budget year. So when I'm talking about property tax year 2024, I'm also talking about budget year 2025. So uh, the legislation for for 244233 specified that the provisions of the bill are only effective if voters do not approve certain ballot measures uh, which have since been withdrawn. So in the in late August 2024 HB 24B 1001 was passed in the special session, the most recent special session, and that modified the big property tax bill from the regular session, which was SB 24233. So the special session bill made additional assessed value changes, also made changes to the SB 23233's property tax revenue limit and changed that, finalized that into a 5.25% limit. And um, I'm calling it for now the 5.25% limit, but it could also be seen as a 10.5 limit, 10.5% limit over two years. So this new limit is, is, has been, is on the books, and this limit begins for the 2025 property tax year or the 2026 budget year. So that's not this upcoming bud budget year for budget year 2025. This is for uh, the following uh, budget year, budget year 2026. Um, it also clarified some ballot language, some specific, specific ballot language for ballot issues to waive this new limit, the new 5.25% limit. There was also some provisions for limited local government backfill and uh, also a different school district property tax limit. And a lot of the changes from the special session bill apply to budget years 2026 and beyond. So that's property tax year 2025 and beyond. Um, I'm showing here briefly the... Um, an updated table of assessment rate changes that are in effect, and this is inclusive of all the legislation up to and including HB 24B-1001. So this chart um, is in property tax years, so if you're thinking in budget years, add a year to, to the, the top of row. Um, but this is showing the assessment rate changes for the future. And you can see that in uh, for property tax year 2025, that's budget year 2026 onwards, the residential assessment rate will uh, depend on statewide growth, um, and some of that, and that which will be determined by the state board of equalization. So, the the assessment rate could change depending on what statewide growth um, is. Here's also another page of the assessment um, rate changes for the next couple of years for the different property classification types. So I know there's a lot of questions and, about this new revenue limit that came out of the special session. So we'll spend a couple minutes talking about this. Um, again, this new limit, I'm going to call it just for reference, the 5.25% limit. And 
Again, it starts for budget year 2026. I know there's a lot of questions about it. You can certainly start thinking about it now. And I know a lot of local governments are, but um, there's not a, a concrete action you have to take until you start planning for budget year 2026. So the legislation defines a local government entity as being subject to the revenue limit. So this would apply to most property taxing local governments with some major exceptions. So there are a couple groups of local governments that are not subject to this limit. That statute calls out as being not subject. They don't have to worry about this limit. Um, the first group are school districts and home rule local governments. So if you're one of those types of local gov governments, uh, this, li this new limit does not apply to you. If your entity is subject to the 5.5% limit, and um, if you're one of those local governments, that means every year you're using that DLG 53 form to, to calculate your mill levy and uh, to, to make sure that you're under the 5.5% limit, which is administered by our office, uh, the Division of Local Government. You know, if you that's part of your process, you've been doing that for many years, and you're you're still subject to that process, then you are excluded from this new revenue limit. And similarly, if you have never sought voter approval to remove some table restrictions to retain the majority of revenue, of property tax revenue, then you are also excluded from this limit. So that kind of says to me that if you have never asked the voters to waive the five and a half limit, or if you have never asked your voters to waive some pro some table restrictions or never had a table election, um, a, a table waiver election, and sometimes that's referred to as, quote, debrucing, um, then you would not be subject to this revenue limit. So DOLA will be working with local government partners to develop technical assistance resources in the spring of 2025. However, um, please understand that this is a locally calculated limit um, and that the local government is ultimately responsible for calculating this new limit. And uh, part of the reason for that is because our office, DOLA, is not, not, uh, does not have an official role, does not have a statutory role in this limit. Um, we do have a role in technical assistance, but we can't... Uh, make final determinations or calculate the limit for all local governments. Um, that's in that sense, it's a little bit like just in in terms of the self um, the local calculation administration of the limit. It's a little bit like a taper limits in that sense that you're responsible as a local government entity. You are responsible for calculating those and ensuring that you're in compliance with with, with taper. And you're, you will be responsible for ensuring your own compliance with this 5.25% revenue limit. So this revenue limit excludes various property tax revenue that's attributable to certain valuation or circumstances. So I've listed those here. Um, so the statute references qualified, quote, qualified property tax revenue, which excludes a revenue attributable to this list of this list of uh, valuation or circumstances. So this includes certain growth valuation, and this might be kind of familiar. Uh, new construction is not um, included in the limit, um, f as well as property taxes approved by voters for the payment of outstanding bonds or contractual obligations. And many of these listed are are not really changed from the revenue limit that was in that was proposed in uh, 24233 um, however there are some changes and some of this information is not yet available yet it's because it's a new methodology some of this information is not yet provided to local governments by their county assessors so that's another process dola will be coordinating coordinating with uh, county assessors and and local government partners to 
come up with a, a way for county assessors to provide this information to local governments. Um, and some of those in, that some of that information that's that's new is includes the total uh, total producing mines or lands or leaseholds producing oil and gas. Um, so we county assessors currently provide the the growth of this, but not the total amount. So that's an amount that will be a new uh, in addition to uh, increased property tax revenue attributable to uh, tax increment financing expiration. Uh, that's something that's um, not currently used in at least the five and a half percent limit or the existing uh, Tabor property tax revenue limit calculation. So a couple of new line items on here that that local governments will need to be aware of in order to calculate this new limit. Also, that includes specific ownership revenue and disaster emergency spending. Uh, I, I don't believe those are currently included in uh, other revenue limit calculations. So some new information here that will need to be reported by county assessors. And we will be working on that process uh, throughout the spring, starting spring of, of 2025. So we have you know, the entire spring and summer to get this process um, solidified. Uh, DOLA will begin coordinating with assessors and local government stakeholders in early 2025 to ensure local governments have sufficient information to calculate this limit, which I have to stress again, will be locally administered, calculated, and enforced. So uh, this last slide on the rev this new 5.25% revenue limit, I'm going to talk a little bit about on a really high level what the, the 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 methodology, the concept for the methodology is. So like a lot of revenue limits, you kind of have a base amount and then that base amount is allowed to grow by a certain amount every every year. So this is a limit that will be calculated annually. And uh, the base amount would will be the year in the previous assessment cycle that generated more qualified property tax revenue. And there is a growth rate percentage, so that base amount is allowed to grow by 5.25% times the number of years in the current assessment cycle, plus a carrier carryover amount. And that carryover amount is the difference between the base amount and the qualified revenue amount. And that qualified revenue amount excludes those uh, that that bulleted list that I had on the previous slide. So that on the that is the concept for this new 5.25% revenue limit on the highest level. Now, the statute does not include a formula, so we will be working through, DOLA will be, be trying to work with local government partners to come up with some method, method, a methodology option or a formula option for local governments to use as a technical re assistance resource. Um, that will not be the just because we have a technical assistance resource out there and, an, and a methodology option, when we get that out, that won't be the only official way to calculate this limit. That will only be an option because, as I mentioned, you know, DOLA does not, the Division of Local Government and DOLA does not have an official role in administering this limit. So, if, you know, when we come out with that option and that methodology, it, it's not. Uh, it's not required to, for you to use our technical assistance resources because this is ultimately a locally administered, calculated, and enforced limit. So this limit, kind of like some other revenue limits that are in place, it is possible to waive this limit. So it's possible to go to your voters and ask them if uh, we, if local government can waive this new 5.25 limit and uh, collect and spend revenues uh, in excess of this this limit. So that that does that something like that would have to go to the voters. And the statute does have some some specific information on what on the process for waiving that. Um, the statute says that you can waive a single year. You can ask ask voters to waive a single year, specific years, or all future years. There's also specific ballot title language. So you, if, you, if your local government decides to ask voters, um, take a look at the statute because there is specific ballot title language and specific ballot language that has to be in front of the voters in order for them 
to be able to waive this limit. So now I'll move on to the backfill. Um, a couple of just a quick overview of the backfill provisions that will affect this upcoming budget year 2025. So budget year 2025 backfill was largely outlined by SB 24233 in the regular session earlier this year. So this is for non-school local governments. And the backfill timeline is going to be similar to the backfill in the previous two years. So last year, um, and, and basically what that means is that the, the assessors will be reporting the information used to calculate the backfill in March, in February and March, and then uh, the state will gather that information, calculate the backfill, and pay pay the backfill out to um, local governments via the county treasurers um, in April. So that 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 timeline is going to be similar. Um, however, the the provisions are different. So um, one main difference is that the only entities that will be eligible for to receive backfill in budget year 2025 are those entities with a decrease in real assessed value between the 2022 and 2024 property tax years. So that would be a, uh, for budget years, that's between 2023 and 2025 budget years, a decrease in real assessed value. So um, if you did not have, if it's not looking like you're going to have a decrease in real assessed value between the 2022 and 2024 property tax years, you will probably not receive a backfill. Uh, the backfill calculation is based on the 2023 budget year modified mill levy, so it excludes bonds and contractual uh, mills levied for bonds and contractual obligations. The total amount of the uh, total amount available for this backfill is 10.3 million dollars total. So, uh, um, and in addition to that, Dola estimates that a couple hundred entities will be eligible for budget year 2025 backfill. And that's a really rough calculation based on uh, an estimate based on uh, based on the information we have at this point, which is all preliminary. So it, it is looking like a, a smaller number, fewer local government entities will receive backfill in 2025. Um, there's uh, a little a little less money available, as well as uh, the the criteria that you have to have a decrease in real assessed value uh, between 2022 and 2024 property tax years. The special session bill also had some provisions for for future backfill. So that didn't really if the special session bill um, from late August didn't affect the 2025 budget year backfill, but it, it, it did have provisions for budget year 2026 backfill. So Again, this is for non-school local governments. The backfill timeline is similar, sort of a spring backfill timeline, getting that out by, by April. Um, the entities that will be eligible for this need to have a decrease in total assessed value between the 2024 and 2025 property tax years. So that's a decrease in total assessed value between the 2025 and 2026 budget years, specifically due to HB 24B 1001. So specifically due to that, um, that, that uh, the most recent special session property tax bill. And that will be based on the 2024 tax year slash 2025 budget year mill levy. So I do want to kind of, the last part of this presentation, I want to discuss uh, this new requirement, which came out of the regular session earlier this year, which will apply to all property taxing local governments. So um, this is a little different from the the new 5.25% limit. I, I, for, the, for, the, for that new limit, um, that doesn't uniformly apply to all property taxing revenue, uh, property taxing local governments. Uh, many are, ex some are excluded from the 5.25% limit. Uh, Based on um, uh, certain, based on your status with uh, 
the the five and a half the existing five and a half limit and some Tabor um, uh, this is some Tabor um, waivers. So unlike that, this one applies to everyone. So I, I do want to address everyone on this uh, call with um, uh, and, and letting everyone know that this is something that everyone's going to have to do. So uh, yeah, please be aware of this. Um, basically, there was a bill that passed in the spe during the regular session, which requires local governments to, re to provide additional information to the county, uh, along with their certification of their mill levy. So local governments have to certify their mill levy to the county by December 15th in order to, in order to basically start a county process to get those mills on the tax roll and for tax bills to go out in January. So now you won't just be certifying your mill levy. Uh, you will have to provide additional information about your mill levy to the county. So counties are then, and then after you certify that to the county, the counties are then required to coordinate with DOLA to ensure that the mill levy information of property taxing entities is publicly available. So DOLA has created a, a draft mill levy public information form which is available on the budgeting and finance page on the Division of Local Government's website. And that form in, is, is on a page with more information, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, it's on our website. And there is guidance on that page for both all the local governments that will have to uh, have to fill out this additional information and provide this additional information to the counties. And there's also county specific guidance because um, counties uh, talking to, uh, you know, for, for all of you county folks, this is an additional process you will have to deal with because the statute does require you to collect all this information from, from your taxing entities and then report that to DOLA. So, so for counties, this uh, they will need to establish a new process for this, and the counties will need to upload all of that information into the Dola County Portal, uh, which we are working on right now. And this will be uploaded in a spreadsheet form. So again, that's just for counties. Counties will need to collect this information, compile it into a spreadsheet by local governments, you know, one, and upload that to the Dola County Portal. Now, that functionality is being built out right now, so we will certainly have additional information and additional communication out to counties about this process. But um, you might want to start thinking about it um, now. So um, this, this next message is really intended for, is intended for just the counties, but counties, um, our ask at this point is that you start thinking about um, what process you want to use to collect this information from local government entities. So um, we imagine it, it will be maybe similar or you know the same team that works on the mill levy certification process might might work also on this new process, but this information does need to be collected. Local governments need a way to submit this information to counties. Now we have it, it, an option for you to choose, a process option for you to use if you'd like, which is you can send out that form that we have on our website to the local entities and just ask them to return that to you along with your, with the mill levy certification. But in order to maintain flexibility, we're not requiring that counties use that form in that process. That's just an option. So to maintain flexibility, we're leaving it up to the counties to decide how to collect this information. Um, that could be, you know, for some smaller counties, maybe that's just emailing this information, uh, getting the the person who, who the, the local government entities to just email this information along with their mill levy cert. And I also know that some counties have a proprietary system for taxing entities to report their to certify their mills to the county to get it on the tax roll. So, if that system can be expanded to collect this additional information, um, that would be great. And if that makes a spreadsheet, because the counties will have to upload this information into a spreadsheet into the DOLA County portal. Um, so if using a proprietary system to do that makes that easier, we highly encourage that. Um, so 
yeah, counties, we're, we're asking you to think about what process you'd like to use and then communicate that out to local governments, you know, preferably, you know, by, by November or so. And so that's just for counties. They have to work on a new process, a new reporting process. And for local governments, for now I'm speaking back to the broader audience here, but for local governments, uh, please, uh, you know, give counties some time to, 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 to figure out what their reporting process is. So, so you can contact them in November or so to ask them how they want you to submit. But at this moment, you know, you can start researching this information because the information is, is going to be the information that's statutorily required. That information is not going to change very much, if at all. So, and what information am I talking about? It's on this page. So um, this list of bulleted information is the information that statute requires local governments to provide along with their mill levy certification. So a whole mill levy package you'll have to deliver to your counties. So, um, uh, you know, counties will decide how they want you to submit this information, but the information will be the same. So it's, so if you want to start working on this, you can certainly start to think about um, how you are going to provide this information for each bullet to uh, the county. So, and it will ultimately be made public. So, um, you can start researching this now. Just know that um, uh, how you will submit this to the county will be decided a little later, but the information will be the same. Yep. And yeah, so that is this new requirement. Um, I, I do want to make everyone aware of this. We're going to continue doing outreach on this to, to, to make sure local governments are aware, but all local governments ha will have to fill this out. All counties will have to work on that process um, and we'll be reaching out to, to both groups. So counties, we, we will be providing additional information, additional, additional documentation on how to get that uploaded. But we are leaving the process up to you uh, on how you want to collect this information. We don't, so we're kind of agnostic as to how you, you provide this information, but um, you, you will be required to we will be prescriptive in how that information is transmitted from the county to the state. So, um, as a preview, it will it will be a little similar in some ways to uh, the uploading of certification of levies and revenue data to DOLA. So, if 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 you're familiar with that, it will be it will be a little bit similar, at least based on the same foundation. So in conclusion, I'm going to wrap up this uh, recorded webinar with some next steps and takeaways while you're thinking about your 2025 budget. So in terms of uh, the, the assessed value that will be your property tax base for the 2025 budget year, um, know that assessors used the 24-233 slash 24B dash one zero zero one assessment rates and adjustments for the preliminary certification of value. So you should already have a preliminary certification of value with your net assessed value in hand. And that is inclusive of all the legislative changes to assessment rates up till now and adjustments. So, and that's because the special session bill mostly impacts property tax year 2025, which is budget year 2026 and beyond. So it didn't really touch the assessment rates for budget year, the assessment rates which went into the certification of value which you received. So uh, unlike last year, there's not the potential for a large shift. The assessment rates won't change between the preliminary and the final certification of value. So um, you can use that as a solid estimate for your property tax base. Of course, our, our advice is always uh, our guidance is always wait till you get your certification, your final certification of value before you finalize your mill levies. Oh, another step, if you believe that you, there might have been some assessed value, if your assessed value appears to have like declined um, um, in the last couple of years, you, you do a little research. You might want to determine if you're eligible for that limited backfill for budget year 2025. Again, it's, it's more limited than the backfill that was received 
this spring for budget year 2024. So it's a little more limited with more limited el eligibility, but if you believe you're eligible, you know, you, you can look into that. Um, another takeaway is that we, we do want you to start uh, thinking about that local government mill levy information that needs to be provided with your mill levy certification to the county. So local governments start thinking about that because that is a form you are statutorily required to complete and submit to your county. And again, again for counties, start thinking about your process um, on how you want to collect that. We will have a prescribed process for how to report that information to the state, but how you collect that information will be up to you, counties only. Um, and as with all this, you know, this recording and this webinar is really attended as a, a general overview, a very high level overview. Um, we rec always recommend discussing some of these issues with an attorney, especially if you're not sure if you're going to be subject to that new limit or um, anything to do with a, a TABOR status or the information that you need to provide. Some of those questions kind of go into the legal territory. So consult an attorney as needed. Um, if an attorney is not available, uh, you will probably just have to discuss that with staff and the board um, to, to, to make sure everyone's on the same page as you make the decision on what information to provide and which limit to, and, and whether that limit applies to you. So that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, we will be available. Um, our contact information is listed on this page, so please get in touch if you have any questions, and I um, hope you have a nice day. Thank you.